Hi, I'm Kent. Let's go from a simple sketch to some new plaster slip casting molds. In my last video, I showed how I went from a simple sketch on the computer to create these forms. The idea is to just draw the profile of the pot that you want. Here's a small bowl. This one here is a little bit of an angular tumbler. And then the software does everything else. So it goes ahead and revolves this into a cylinder form. It gives you an STL file that you can print out and check that you like the form. After that, it creates a mold form. So for the bowl, it creates this shape here. So it has scaled up the form to account for clay shrinkage. That's this bottom part here, that's why it's bigger. And it automatically added a slip well. And this is an area where we can pour the slip in and let it sit so we don't have a funky rim. And likewise, here's the other form. Exactly the same thing. It automatically created this, added the slip well, scaled it up, everything. In the series, in exploring plaster molds for slip casting, I've used a variety of forms for the plaster. In particular, I've used buckets and collar boards. And while those are effective, they're also kind of annoying in various ways. For the buckets, it's a trick in finding just the right size bucket. Is it wide enough? Is it tall enough? Is it too big? Likewise with the collar board, sometimes you can't get it to actually fit very well. So here are a couple of molds I made in recent videos. And you can see that it has this bucket shape. This is one of the first ones I did, and I actually poured this sitting straight up in the bucket, which isn't ideal. It's really easy to catch bubbles that way. Instead, you want to pour the plaster over the form upside down. So this one here was formed upside down, and you can see the bucket shape. The problem is the slip well sticks out from the pot, and so to have a bucket big enough, it actually winds up flaring out quite a bit. Ideally, we'd have it shaped like this so that we have relatively little plaster on the bottom. Or using collar boards, I went ahead and put collar boards around this one when I poured it, and to get it big enough to have a nice thick rim here so the plaster doesn't break, the bottom winds up being huge. There is way more plaster here than we really need. And while this is a good mold, it's not really fun to use because it's so big and awkward. So how can we fix this? Very early on, I went ahead and designed this mold here. So this makes this little cup here that I've used for a variety of things. It's actually great for tests. It's about the right size. My original kiln could barely hold four of these, so I've come a long ways. And you'll notice it has the slip well. There's a spot for the form for the pot to create. But you'll notice what's different in this one is it actually tapers down. So it actually mimics the shape of the overall pot. So it gets narrower at the bottom because we don't really need all this plaster. As long as we have a nice consistent wall thickness, it should be good enough. Anything else beyond that winds up just being excess plaster. So when I was thinking about designing my software, I wanted to go ahead and automatically model this as well. I've done it manually a couple of times. It's a little bit of a pain. Thinking about the positive and negative spaces can kind of make my brain hurt. So the magic of doing the software is that once I figure that out, it can do it over and over again, regardless of the form. So the idea is, in addition to these pieces that form the shape of the pot, we want a piece on the outside where we can do the plaster. And that's what these are. So this here is a mold form that fits over and has about an inch or 25 millimeters of space all around it so that I can put plaster into it. And then this one is exactly the same. There's about an inch around the whole side so we can pour in plaster and have a nice even wall thickness. This was also automatically modeled by the software and I'll show you that in a second. There are a variety of ways besides buckets and cuddle boards to make mold forms for plaster, but I wanted to go ahead and try a 3D printed approach. So one thing you'll notice is that these are upside down and that's because that's how we want to pour the plaster. So while the form fits this way, you'll notice the inside's all ugly still, it has all the supports. We want it to be upside down so any of the bubbles were raised to the top and are less likely to stick to our form, which means we need something on the outside to be able to pour plaster in. So there's this hole here so we can pour plaster in. Unfortunately, there's a gap between these two. That's the size of the plaster that we want. So we need to fill that in too. So that's what this is. You'll actually notice it's two colors. I ran out of filament, so I had to switch over and I actually printed it in two halves. This is slightly too big for my printer. I thought I had measured it and got it really close. Apparently I got it a little too big. So this is the bottom of the form. So we take our pot form, put it there, take our other form, put it here. We'll need to seal this very well so it doesn't leak. And then we can put it in plaster. And I have one for the other as well. While the plaster goes in this way, it will need to come out the other way because of the draft angles of our pot here. That's why this bottom rim here is separate. It's so it can be removed easily. So we can actually have this three pieces pull off the outside 
from the plaster, pull the top off, pull the top of the plaster off, and then hopefully we can release the inside mold like before. So this was created using a very beta version of the software I'm writing. It requires a few manual steps, but it does all the 3D modeling automatically. And by the way, if you're interested, I've added a link in the description for a waitlist. Go ahead and sign up there. And if you're interested in using the software, fill that out and I will be in touch. All right, let's start with the pot. So this is the same form I showed last time. And here's the next step. So we have the original form here on the inside and there's this offset line here that lets us create the 3D print. We have the scaled up version and another offset line. And we started to add the slip well. What you'll see here is a new set of lines. These are taking the outside of the pot and projecting it out, again, about 25 millimeters. This is gonna be the outside edge of the plaster. And jumping forward a few more steps, we've added a bunch more lines. We have a line offset from this original one so that we can have a 3D print for the outside shell. This line here represents a hole that we're going to make for the plaster that I showed you. So inside here will be the plaster, and then we have our cap as well. Let me go ahead and show you this in 3D, maybe it'll make more sense because there's a ton of lines going on here. So here's our original fired pot, and I went ahead and sliced it in half so we can see things a little bit better. And what we created last time was this piece here. So this is scaled up and it has our slip well. To go with this, we need our plaster. So this is what we want to create. We want to create this plaster that goes around as a jacket around the whole form, and ideally mimics the contour. So that's what some of those extra lines were. So in order to form this, we need an outer mold, which is this piece here. So there's the mold around the plaster. Let me turn the plaster off. So there's a cavity there that we want to go and create. And then finally, we need the top piece as well to cap it off. So we'll be able to pour plaster here. We'll then take out all the 3D printed pieces and then pour slip in there. And of course, as I showed, we do this upside down. So we need to pour in the plaster from this side. So there's tons of offset lines and they're offset from each other to create all this. Luckily, the software is doing it all. I didn't do any 3D modeling and this just kind of magically spits out, which is really cool. All right, and same thing with the other form. We started with the sketch here and then jumping straight into 3D. Here is the form extruded. And I went ahead and sliced it again. So here's the inner print that we made from last time. And so from there, we need to project out the plaster. So this is the plaster that we want. So we need to surround that with the outside and the cap. And there is our other mold. Just like before, all these pieces get saved as STL files and we can go ahead and print it out. Since this is all done in 3D software, I can actually calculate the volume of plaster I need as well. And then it does the math. Basically for every milliliter of volume we wanna fill with plaster, we need one gram of dry plaster. And then there's a ratio of 70 to 100 water to plaster. So it goes ahead and does all that math for me. And like I showed you at the beginning, from there we go ahead and print everything out. This should be everything we need to go ahead and create our plaster. One of the other things I'll note is I printed these outside pieces at a relatively low resolution and very quickly. For example, this print here, I printed at a high resolution because this is the surface of the pot. This print took 20 hours. In contrast, while this thing's huge, it's mostly air and needed almost no supports. This only took five hours to print. I did do a little bit of cleanup here. There were some filament kind of hanging off in places and I didn't want to get it embedded in the plaster, mostly so it doesn't get stuck. Same for this one here. And I've been using my printer a lot these past few weeks. It's still in need of a bit of a tune-up, but my prints keep getting better and better, which is great. So that, I think we are just about ready for plaster. I went ahead and CA glued this together since it was two pieces. That's a little bit of foreshadowing for a video we're gonna cover in the future. We then need to attach this around this inside lip here. And this one will fit inside the outer lip. And we can mix the plaster. I thought about a few different ways to attach these together. It needs to be attached well enough to hold the plaster, but it also needs to be removable enough so that we can take it apart once the plaster is set. I've used some silicone caulking in the past. Some people have suggested using hot glue. Other people will use clay. I was watching another video on mold making for plastic pieces, basically using a two-part resin to form plastic, and they use sticky wax to close up their molds. So here's some of the wax. It melts at a relatively low temperature, around 100 degrees C, so it's way less than the PLA, so I don't need to worry about melting the PLA. And I got a little tool to help put this together. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this, and hopefully it will work well. Let's reset for that. All right, so here is the magic tool. It's got, I don't know, it's like a low temperature soldering iron, basically. And I have not used this before, so I don't know if it's gonna work. So I designed this ring with a little bit of tolerance, and so probably easiest to see on this side. There's a tiny little gap here, less than a millimeter. And the idea was that I wanted some space there, one, so it would fit, but two, so I could actually put something down in there. So hopefully the wax will melt down in there. The problem is on the inside, 
I can't really get up under there. So what I think I'm going to do is attach this and then put wax around this edge here. That means the very top of the plaster might be a little bit funky, but that part is just there for structure. So I think we'll be okay. I only played this with a little bit, and I think the idea is just to take it and melt it together. If any of you are sticky wax experts, let me know. I'm just going to tack it down in a couple places. All right, and like that, it's on there. So I'm just going to go around the whole thing and make sure I have a nice watertight, plaster tight seal. So it was really hard to show you and figure out how to do it at the same time. So I went ahead and did the rest off camera. There definitely are some tricks to applying it. I'm not sold on it yet as the solution, but when it cools down, it is nice and sticky and firm. That part's great. I actually wound up pulling out my hot air gun and reflowed this a little bit. So it's a little bit smoother. There's definitely gonna be some artifacts from the wax in the top of my mold, as I mentioned, but it's the very top of the mold. I think that's okay. I did the other one while I was at it. This one went a little bit easier, so there may just be a practice element as well. All right, next will be the outer mold. This one here. However, we don't want to put that on yet because we need to go ahead and put some mold release on this. Go go ahead and put my mold soap on and basically cover this liberally so that we have a chance to get everything out. So usually this is used as a barrier between layers of plaster, but I figured it probably won't hurt on the... 3D printed part as well. Just gonna rub it on everywhere. And while we're at it, we'll do the second one. I'm also gonna do the inside of the outer mold. And since this room here is our mating surface, I'm gonna go ahead and take a clean paper towel and try and make sure that it's nice and clean as well. All right, and the last little bit of protection, I'm gonna squirt some Windex on this surface here. This is a surficant, so it should help break the bubbles when the plaster touches it. All right, that's all of the mold prep. Now we can seal these guys up. All right, just like before, I'm gonna go around and put on a nice healthy bead of the sticky wax. I'll go ahead and do that off camera and show you the results. I went ahead and did the outside and that was way easier. I think being able to put the wax down the way I intended was good. I also switched over to this very old and pretty bad hot glue gun. This is only a 10 watt gun, so it wasn't getting very hot. Didn't actually work for hot glue. So I figured it'd be good for this. That worked okay. Um, the mechanism to push the wax in this case forward didn't actually work very well, so I was pushing it manually, but that actually put out a fair bit of wax pretty quickly. And then I went around again with the hot air gun and did both of them. I'm a little worried this might leak since I've never used the sticky wax before. So on the inside, I went ahead and put my foil tape as an insurance policy. I'm hoping I won't need to do this in the future, that the wax will be good enough or I can find a solution that's good enough. And this one too. Unfortunately, I ran out of my foil tape, so I can't do the outside. So I think I might just take some packing tape and put around the outside just in case. I really don't want a plaster disaster. Okay, a little bit of extra insurance. I do know I want to redesign the bottom already. The tolerance I put in is not big enough. I made that ring slightly large. It needs to be even a little bit larger. As I mentioned, the inside was much harder than the outside. So being able to flow the wax down from the outside was much easier. So I think I might redesign the inside ring to have a spot for the wax. That is assuming I stick with the wax. It's still a big if. Let's see if I wind up with plaster all over the floor or not. Speaking of, the software went ahead and spit out how much plaster is needed. So it rounds up a little bit. So this one's a little under 2.25 liters of space. And this one is just under 1.75. So I went ahead and put that together. So I got, I'm gonna mix up four liters of plaster. That should give me, I don't know, maybe a five or 10% margin. I've got all that measured out. So let's go ahead and mix the plaster. First to slake it. All right, while that's leaking, I'm gonna pull out some extra, extra insurance. Get my metal tray here. This will hopefully catch at least the beginnings of a plaster disaster. All right, and now we mix for four. Let's 
skim some of the bubbles off the surface. All right, I'm gonna pour a little bit in and see if I have a mess on my hands or not. That's that one. You see any leaks? So far, no. I went just below the rim there. Perfect. I spilled a little bit. And I do indeed see some plaster leaking out under the tape here. Packing tape was a good call. Easy insurance. This one's fine. So for some reason it was just this one. And my plaster calculations look like they're pretty good. I just have a little bit left. All right, we'll go ahead and let the plaster set and we'll come back to this. Plaster has cured. There are the spots where I spilled, but no major leaks. None on the inside. None on the inside there. So here is the spot that leaked on the outside. I don't know if this is because I didn't have much clearance and I wasn't able to get enough wax in there or something else. I definitely want to rethink this cap piece. Now let's go ahead and pull the tape off. There's that one. Again, no leaking on the inside. Just a few spots on the outside here. All right, let's see how I'm gonna take this off. All right, that's all the way around. Let's see if I can get it to remove itself. The outside is free. Yep, a little bit of leakage here, so I guess I didn't get it down all the way. And the wax came out. And this top surface looks pretty good. All right, and the other one. Again, the outside's free. Oh, and it got underneath there a little bit as well. So it looks like both of them leaked a little bit, but no plaster disasters, that's a win. And right, I'll deal with these later. Same thing, clean this up. Now the next test is see if we can get the 3D prints out. My last one worked okay, so hopefully this one will as well. So we've got some air here. I'm gonna see if I can put some air between the plaster and the 3D print. And they're out. Actually, I cheated. That was a dramatic reenactment. <laughs> It took a while longer, but I did finally get these out. It took a little bit of prying and a lot of error and I eventually wiggled them out. And the molds actually look great. So there's that one. I don't see any bubbles in the surface of the mold. The top rim here needs to be cleaned up. And here's the other one. Also looks great. It's a bit dark down in there, but you can see. So it definitely was a bit of a struggle getting these out. And that's one of the challenges of using a 3D printed part and plaster is that this is rigid and that's rigid. It was actually harder to get out than my last one, but I'm not exactly sure what the difference is. All right, next up is to remove the outside. However, there's a ton of surface area and a fair bit of texture. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these pieces off. That way I don't have to struggle trying to pull them out and potentially damage the plaster. And these pieces were the ones that were quick to print instead of the inside forms, which were really slow since they're on high resolution. So let me go ahead and do that off camera and we'll show you the mold. All right, and they're out. Just went ahead and cut a relief cut on the back side of the mold. Potentially I could just tape this back together and reuse it. And here are the outside of the molds. As expected, they're a little bit rougher than the inside since we printed it on a uh, low resolution. But overall, they're in good shape. And the other mold, very similar, looks pretty good. And here is an artifact from how I poured it. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. So the good news is that the software is working as intended. We have created the molds that I wanted to create. 
The bad news is they're a little bit hard to demold. So this is definitely something we're gonna look at in the future. I'm gonna go ahead and let these finish curing and dry all the way out, and then we will slip cast a pot next. The molds have dried out and they're looking good. While they were a bit damp, I went ahead and cleaned them up a little bit, and they've been drying. They've actually dried really fast. That's one of the advantages of having the thinner wall that's consistent, is that they can let the moisture off. And the other one also looks good. So let's go ahead and slip cast some pots. I got my slip here all mixed up and I've got my homemade slip table here hanging off to the side. Let's go ahead and fill them up. Up into the slip well. All right, these will sit for about half an hour. All right, our slip level has dropped and looks like we have a good pot. Let's see it formed there. I'm just gonna dump this back into my container here. One brand new pot from the brand new mold. And the second. All right, I just tilted those up at a bit of an angle on my slip table. These will drain out for about half an hour and the pot will firm up a little bit more. We'll then demold it. All right, we should be ready to demold. Yep, it's starting to pull away from the plaster. There's a close up. And the other one's looking good too. Let's go ahead and trim these up and pull them out. All of this just gets reclaimed. Let's start with the little one. I can cut straight down to the slip well. And over. Perfect. And same thing. All right, we got a nice wall thickness on our pots. Grabbed a wear board, so uh, usually I just flip these over and palm them. Just like that. And there are our molds. You can let these dry out for a while and use them again. And here are the brand new pots. Obviously they're extremely soft at this point but they're looking good. I'll let these firm up for a few minutes and then I can pick them up and show them to you. So here is a close up, much like the last one. This one has a few of the 3D printed artifacts, but again, I kind of like it. They're more pronounced on the foot. I think with the way the printer steps up right there, they're a little bit more obvious. These are pretty easy to clean up with a sponge. And then the other one. Right now this one's a little bit giant, but remember this is gonna shrink. Once this is fully dry and then I wind up firing it, it's gonna shrink down to this size. It is amazing how much things shrink. And again, this one looks really good. There's less of the horizontal banding like there was in the others. So stepping up the resolution, I think definitely helped. And again, the foot, this one looks a little bit better. I think the more angular is good. The other one has a little bit more curve to it. So part of this may be also figuring out what design works well with the 3D printer. So we might be able to tweak our designs a little bit and have them come out better. And then turning back to the molds, I am very happy with these. I like their shape. I like the fact that we don't have a bunch of excess plaster hanging out. I didn't have any bubbles on the inside, not that I can tell, or they're really tiny if they're there. There are a few bubbles on the outside of the mold. So the strategy of casting it upside down is a good one. This one, same thing, I don't really see any bubbles. And there are a few on the outside. A little bit of damage removing the other shell, but this doesn't impact the pot at all. There is one little weird artifact. So right here, there's a little bit of funkiness and it does actually show up in the pot. 
I think it's right here, this little bit of roughness here. I wonder if maybe that was some wax that got on the mold and I didn't catch it. Not exactly sure. Either way, that's pretty easy to clean up. So we're making great progress. We've come a long way in this mold deep dive. Now I really want to go back and revisit this mold and do the same thing on the outside. I think it will be a much more pleasant mold to use if I do so. The software is working, at least in a preliminary way now. We can take our sketch and change it up and explore different forms very easily. And then the software will just spit out the STL forms that we can print out. We do have a few limitations that we need to address. Getting the 3D printed forms out was a little bit more tricky. For some reason, it was harder this time to get the inner mold out. And I went ahead and cut off the outer mold. And we did have a little bit of leakage out of this bottom piece here. So still a few more things to fix. We'll talk about those in future videos. Again, if you have any interest in using the software, use the link down below. And in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.